Hello again guys, this is the next Sports Psychology screencast and this week we're going to be discussing leadership theory. There are three different elements to leadership theory and you've met them before. They are the trait approach, social learning theory and interactionist theory. Now the most important thing is not to get confused within the different elements of sports psychology at A2 level make sure when you're talking about these different theories you're relating them directly to leadership and not thinking about the other elements such as personality or aggression that we've already covered so be careful with that one okay with regards to trait approach this suggests that all leaders are born and not made okay so essentially they're in, they've inherited genetic characteristics with a capacity to take charge. They have leadership qualities inbuilt within them. And these leadership traits are stable personality dispositions. Good examples of those are things such as tough-mindedness, uh, intelligence, decision-making qualities, a general ruggedness, a general natural instinct to command and operate people. Okay. And what that's saying is that those sort of things are genetically passed down or inherited from their parents. So therefore, trait approach states that a natural leader should be able to take control of any situation you put them in. Be it if they're in a sporting situation, be it if they're in the outdoors leading a group, be it if they're in the army, be it if they're in a swimming pool for example they should be able to take charge or control of any given situation good example of this Winston Churchill if we're not talking about a sporting context would possibly have been a natural leader if we're talking about a sporting context if you think about rugby Martin Johnson would be a natural leader quite a large person very uh, big sort of character very strong uh, leader and that could have been inherited through a trait approach. The problem with trait theory is that it's not a very good predictor of behaviour. And so the argument is that, all right, we're saying that the genetic inheritance is tough mindedness. Well, you can't really prove that tough mindedness has been passed down to someone. There's not enough proof in this theory. So, therefore, because your tough mindedness it, it doesn't guarantee that you're therefore going to be a good leader an important point to note about trait approach <clears throat> is this concept of the great man of leadership <clears throat> and this suggests that inherited qualities of leadership such as tough mindedness are actually inherited by sons and not daughters just sons who have previously been successful leaders so for example if Winston Churchill was a very successful leader and he had a son this theory the great man of leadership suggests that that son will have inherited Winston Churchill's uh, genetic leadership qualities and therefore could have the potential to become a great leader himself and it's only sons within that theory, which is another argument to add if you were female, of course. Social learning theory, well, we've met this many a time now as A2 students. And obviously, he suggests that leadership will be learned through the environment. So learning from others, copying others, using role models. And this is obviously taking place where aspiring leaders, so someone who's thinking about, well, okay, maybe I could do that captaincy, um, they can learn leadership behaviour through their own captain or leader models such as a coach. The way they process or copy others is what we call vicarious reinforcement and relates to Bandura's model from ASPE, of course. And Social learning theory essentially, with regards to leadership, states that we can learn leadership skills. We don't have to be a natural leader. We can, be, we can learn these skills along the way. And good examples of this are for those that are doing a sports leader course. 
not everybody in that group will be a natural leader but they're learning skills how to become a leader and it can be learned and it can be taught the way social learning theory works is it promotes the learning the skills of leadership through imitation and experience so for example we go back to this sports leaders award the, the young sports leader students may copy uh, certain aspects of what the teacher or the leader of that group will be doing or showing them so that's imitation the other aspect it encourages is experience so as a leader gains a little bit of experience they might fail in a situation such as I don't know they're they're in a, a group situation controlling a group of children within a sporting activity and they let the kids run riot but they would have learned from that situation and if they were put in that situation again it could be the case well actually I'm not going to do that I'm going to put a strategy involved to make me a better leader so they're learning from experience the problem with social learning theory of course as always it doesn't take into account naturally gifted leaders through hereditary characteristics okay the final theory is interactionist theory and this is a combination of inherited ability so genetic quality and learned skills through social learning theory and we're saying that leadership skills emerge through being naturally a good leader but also learning through others mainly leadership skills through interactionist theory emerge through certain situations arising so it could be um, I don't know someone has broken their leg on a field of play you're the nearest person you have to react to that and it could trigger a leadership trait so that situation could trigger oh Christ I've got to I've got to go and phone the ambulance I've got to take charge of the situation it's triggered my leadership trait in an individual or it's forced me to use something that I've learned before in another environment so social learning theory so okay I was watching EastEnders last night and this is what they did because someone had a heart attack so I'm triggered into using that situation good examples of this are here we are in the outdoors and the individual in the yellow jacket is the leader and she's been forced in a situation of taking her group across a river all right she's had to take charge and make a decision the river is the situation that's occurred in the outdoors it's unexpected maybe or was expected she's having to make a decision and trigger her leadership skills if we're talking about a sporting situation it could be in a basketball game you're down by 10 points and you really need to win the game the leader could gather the group together and create a huddle and drive some motivation to their group which is maybe what's required or offer some direct instruction so that person is taking charge within that environment triggered by that situation okay as per usual make good notes and bring to class <laughs>